Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 70 of the Friday Nightmares podcast. On this episode, we will be talking about Thai horror. I am one half of your hosting team this evening, coming to you from the town of Sports Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy, fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, I'm ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet, feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the not-so-glorious <laughs> beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Smoke Show. And with me, as always, is... I was gonna say, another thing is, in Tim Davis's mom. Yeah! <laughs> I'm your mom now, Tim Davis. <laughs> Uh, Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada, and we're just dealing with a bunch of technical issues, probably because we're recording on a Friday night, which we never do. Well, I should say we never do. We do once Rarely. in a while. Um, we're just all over the place, Scott and I. We're just really, really busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super busy lives. And, you know, we just are constantly trying to, uh, you know, make it work, I guess you could say. Make it rain. So, make it, make it rain. <laughs> make it rain. <laughs> what Scott's been doing. Fucking watching like a maniac. He went from never watching anything to watching all the fucking movies. See, so. this is what happens when you give me shit. I know. I should just learn by now to keep my fucking mouth shut. But, you know, here we are and here you are. And back we are again in the saddle. That we are, and oh boy, did we have a lot of fun together over that weekend. Oh man, did we ever. We're going to have to talk about that, but I feel like we should get into our 2020 teams because you watched a lot of movies, though I have made you cut some of them out. <laughs> you may not talk about it. It's not. I mean, some of them are not really worth talking about, so it's fair. Right. So anyway, I guess we'll get to this first one here. Um, this is a Netflix film. Oh, for people who don't know our show format, because you know, like Tim from Horror for Dummies now does an intro. They actually apologize on their most recent episode for talking too much about non movies. Yeah. We don't apologize. You know why, yeah. Tim? Because we're not ashamed of who we are. <laughs> this is us. This is our fucking banter. You like <laughs> it or you hate it. We're like singing that song from The Greatest Showman. This is me. You know that song? I do not. <laughs> Oh man, if like I didn't care about privacy laws, we would put this at the end of our fucking show and have it play. But we're not going to do that because we actually care about artists getting paid for their work. Tim Davis. Ooh. Yeah. Truth is, we just are too truth bomb. <laughs> not that we care that much it's just for too lazy it's just so, it's just extra editing it's just extra editing so for if you're a first time listener what we do is we uh we jump into 2022 so we were watching scott and i are uh 2022 watchers and we just watch all the horror movies not as much as mark nato so if you listen to the rotten round table we're like a mark nato light yeah um we do more than theoretical releases but we don't do every single film that's ever been released this year so uh, we do cover a variety of international films. We do cover a variety of Shutter, Prime, on VOD on demand, uh, as well as theatrical releases. I'm forgetting something. Tubi. Yeah, Tubi, a low bunch of stuff. You name it, we'll more than likely we'll watch it. Yeah, we watch we watch everything. Yeah, you should see our Pornhub searches. <laughs> Oh, man. No one wants to see those. <laughs> oh, man. They may be scared. And I want to go down that road. There's trouble down that road. Wow, well, history um, down that road. <laughs> history down that road. <laughs> I have threesomes down that road. Um, <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? So, yeah, we do that. We talk about older watches if we watch anything of interest or highlight. And then finally, we uh, we do talk about what's new, which is just what's going on in our lives. It's not related, not what's new in horror news. You listen to Sasha Radio for that shit. You don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> you actually want to know news, you talk to Rob Humphrey. Yeah. You don't talk to Scott and I. Scott and I don't know fucking anything. Well, like a movie will come out and be like, oh shit, that movie came out. Oh, it's coming out tomorrow. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. We'll watch it. <laughs> And then finally, we do a review of, right now we're doing international films, and then we do an out of the dark topic. Um, and this one's going to be talking about eating out humans, mm, but not in, the porn hub, not in the porn hub way. Oh, oh, well, I guess it's my specialty that way, too. <laughs> like, what we want to do to Tim, don't you want to put Tim Davis and Horror for Dummies on, like, a barbecue and just rotate him? Oh, I was hoping like, you were going to say, I, I want to toss his salad, I want to eat his ass. <laughs> oh, that, that, 
we also talk about there's a podcast that we that we constantly harass or called horror for dummies um we have a feud with them and it's real it's a real feud um it's a sex feud the, the truth is they're assholes so they constantly belittle me calling me a bitch um hurting my feelings every single always, chance they get always talking about how sexy i am yeah always Bastard. always how much they hate me i just i don't know what i did i'm just a nice heather just trying <laughs> to get by and they just bully me but i guess like tim really like didn't like halloween ends maybe because he identifies with the bullies and maybe that's <laughs> how it is i'm Corey because <laughs> i'm murder kids <laughs> and he's one of the he's one of the band geeks he's one of the he's a mullet one that's who he is yes that's right so anyway, that's a little format of our show in case for some reason that, I don't know, you're starting episode 70. I don't know if you would, but if you did, that's what we do. So we're going to jump into our first movie, which is called Hellhole. And no, we're not talking about something that's on Scott. Um, yeah, that's is- my pleasure hole. He's <laughs> got All right, that was funny. All right, this is a 90-minute runtime. Um, in a monastery cut off from the world, the monks were in a clinic for the possessed. One day, a young policeman, Merrick, very Polish name, comes to the convent. Posing as a clergyman, he penetrates monastery life and then tries to explain the recent mysterious disappearance of several tormented, tormented inmates. It turns out, however, there was no way out of the monastery. Um, this is a Netflix film. I I actually thought it was fairly enjoyable. I I I don't know. Exorcism films are a dime a dozen to me. Some like there's very few that are done really well, unless it's the Exorcism of Emily Rose or the one that we shot saw on Shutter last year, two years ago, about the yeah. uh, the guys. That one was really really. Or well the done. one we'll be talking about in our main topic. Yeah, like those to me stand out. This is just a fly by night exorcism film for me. Um, but it is an easy watch on Netflix and it is dubbed. Uh, so if you're an exorcism completist, I don't know. What did you think, Scotty? Um, I went into this one expecting it to be like your very generic Christianity exorcism possession type film. And it takes a different twist that made it actually much more interesting to me. I think that helped because I am not a big fan of most exorcism films. Uh, you know, obviously the big name ones excluding them but uh no this one i just thought was fun like it had like a a different take on it and uh i thought the acting was well done it was well shot had some uh cool uh cool like dark atmospheric moments to it like definitely worth a watch since you have it on netflix right it's a netflix free watch so if you dig this shit and international films are where it's at it's still better than anything else netflix puts out honestly right for that we recommend it um so scott has this next one because i haven't seen it all right so the next one is called love hurts also known as most horrible things uh this one is the synopsis is six strangers are invited to a dinner party by a charming and enigmatic host lured by the promise of substantial financial reward if they last the whole evening however all is not what it seems as the host reveals the dangerous and ultimately deadly secrets of his guests so this has a very similar uh plot synopsis as uh the one with Jeffrey Combs, uh, what was that called? Would you rather? Like it has, a, it's very similar to the, like it's a big dinner party thing with all these guests getting lured in for money. But uh, it takes a little bit of a different twist to it, and each person is basically there to kind of conquer something of theirs, like get past something that they have struggled with. And it, yeah, it definitely takes a dark turn, but I found this to be very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely recommend this one to watch, uh, especially if you like that. Would you rather style? uh style of plot uh all the characters i thought did really well um had me just kind of guessing what was going to happen next but yeah highly entertaining and you know there's definitely a new uh mini theme going on with these uh dinner to guest type movies i like it <laughs> and... to another award dinner party award Nobody exactly award. <laughs> there's not enough dinner party movies no. in 2022 to do an award for <laughs> no, not not yet so do you recommend it as a watch then obviously uh yes i had a lot of fun with this one i highly recommend it unfortunately Unfortunately, it does not look like it's available to watch anywhere just yet. Because mm, we watch screeners. Yeah. <laughs> but when this one comes out, either look for the title Love Hurts or Most Horrible Things. I'm not sure which one it will go for. Well, it'll be good to know, and it will probably be on VOD, so please check it out. Unless, I don't know, Shutter sometimes picks this shit up like a year later, you know, or whatever the case may be. So the next one is a uh, Amazon Prime, I believe film yeah it's a prime film for me anyway i think it's on prime for you as well 
Uh, uh, run, sweetheart, run. Oh yeah, I'm not sure where that is for me yet. I'll look that. Oh okay, it's on Prime for for me. Uh, so this is a 103 minute yep. runtime. A first date from hell. A woman runs for her life through the streets of Los Angeles after her blind date suddenly turns violent. Well, it's not a date actually, but that's fine. Um, that's a small error that I think we can forgive that this movie. That I mean, it time. kind of sort of turns into a date. In the way. I guess so. It does, right? Um, there's some really good actors in this. The acting in this to me was very, very good. I felt like it was a light version of Take Back the Night and Lucky. It was like, okay, we're going to do those movies, only we're going to make a little fun and fluffy at parts. Um, That being said, I think it's an entertaining watch. I think it's a smooth watch. Uh, I think that the acting is great, especially by the main uh, woman, uh, Ella Balinska. Excellent actress. Hope to see her in more stuff. Um, she's only been in Charlie's Angels and Hunted, so hope to see her in more. I, I thought she was really quite good. Um, yeah, my general thoughts are this is a de- definitely a, a kind of a survival film, Surviving the Night. You kind of get the vibe out of that from the from the title. Uh, it keeps you engaged. I think it went a little bit of a silly route at times. I, I think if they just kept it more um, natural, it would have been a little bit better, but Overall, an entertaining watch for a free watch on Prime. What did you think, Scotty? I love this. I just had so much fun with it. Um, I think it's because it does take a little more of a lighthearted approach compared to uh, mm. the other more serious, darker films that you brought up. Mm-hmm. Um, this one definitely uh, is shot really well. Act- the acting is phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to try to pronounce his name because, like you said, Ella Belinska, and then the villain of the movie, Pilo Esbek. Uh, he uh, people will know him if they're if they watch Game of Thrones. He was uh, the uh, Theon's uh, brother or like sibling or something like that. Yeah. And that, and he was a complete asshole in that movie. And he just kind of, or in that show, and he completely brings that type of style. This. He was also an overlord from uh, 2000. Oh, is he really? Yes, he was an overlord. Yeah, he's a lot of acting chops to his name, to be honest with you. They really did. I think he made this movie entertaining. Like, I think yeah. he carried a lot of this film, to be honest. Yeah, because like the what makes this film for me, besides the acting, is the way that it is filmed. It has, like, yeah. these break the fourth wall moments to it. And I feel that that kind of, like, adds to the entertainment value while still being, like, respectful to the source of what it's covering. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I highly recommend this. It's, like, pretty much it's uh right from the get-go. It just goes. And it's quick runtime. And, yeah, it's on Prime for me as well. This is definitely... uh going to be up for an award possibly for me awesome so there you go run sweetheart run available on prime uh the next one is a to be found footage and i'm gonna basically tell you now don't watch it uh it is the godita diaries i think that's how you say it it's a 93 minute runtime of torture um vlogger (laughs) richard deacon investigates black magic and the summoning of king solomon 72 demons in his current series uh you know jay short who also wrote this film and produced it don't quit your day job my friend i Ooh. it's not a, i don't know what this dude was thinking you know there's some people that like go into a movie and you're like wow you brought your best effort and you really tried here i didn't get that impression with this one. Oh boy um yeah like something where day of disappearance where that person wrote directed acted i did watch that on scotty scotty's recommendation a much better found footage film yeah I recommend that one much more over this one. Skip this one. It's on Tubi, but no. Like, I don't usually shit on movies. Um, this was this guy's ego was out of control with who made this film. It it hmm. was not good. So all yeah. right, good to know. And like I'm a lover of found footage, but I'll make sure to skip this one then. Yeah, I I it's not worth your time, Scotty. All right, good to know. Uh so the next one I know both of us have seen. Uh and that is Feed me. Feed me, Seymour. Feed. And I love the uh, way they did this, uh, the subtitle or whatever you call that. You are who you eat. Mm-hmm. Each word, pre- eat, which word prophesized with a period. Mm-hmm. Um, the synopsis is, following the death of his wife, a broken man spirals into an abyss of night tremors and depression and finds himself in the home of a deranged cannibal who convinces him to take his own life in the most horrific way imaginable. Mm-hmm. Man, this movie, not only does it have like that dark style synopsis, but it was quite funny. Yeah. Um, the I'm trying to look up the character's name. Um, uh, Alex, Neil, Mr. Williams, Olivia. Uh, Lionel, Neil Ward. Lionel. Uh, yeah. yeah the, the antagonist in this. 
I just fucking had a blast with his character. He was fucked up, but at the same time, quite hilarious. And this movie does not shy away from some gruesome parts either. Yeah, there's some really good gore in this film. This is a really, really good movie, actually. It's a British film. It's a good mix between dark comedy and something that we'll talk about in our Out of the Dark segment a little bit more. Um, And I just, honestly, I think it's worth the rental. I think it's entertaining enough at a 96 runtime. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's dark enough to be creepy, but it has its funny parts in it to entertain you. It moves through quickly. I would say the ending is a good payoff. Um, I like the movie quite a bit, actually. I really, really enjoyed it. It's available on iTunes, Google, Cineplex, Microsoft Store, and YouTube. And I think it's worth any rental that you pay for it. I completely agree. Oh, Scott's coughing. Scott has has COVID round two. Just kidding. The the cough. He doesn't have COVID round two. All right. So the next movie uh, is one that I've seen that you have not, correct? That's correct, because I'm not a nerd. I don't. I, just, I do other things. He said to watch horror movies, Scott. Yeah. Well, this is this, this title sums up the story of my life. Oh, <laughs> get the fuck out of here! The fuck out of here! The loneliest boy in the world. Uh, ninety minute runtime, and the synopsis is: After losing his mother, a lonely boy decides to literally dig up some new friends. But when they mysteriously come back to life, he's launched into a series of misadventures as he tries to keep their secret safe from their neighbors, classmates, and social workers alike. So this is a uh, very, it starts off kind of just like, aw- like sad because yeah, this poor guy's just, you know, by himself and alone in this house and trying to make friends. And then it starts uh, getting just kind of silly and over the top, but it has this like really beautiful aesthetic to it where it's just very colorful. The house is really colorful. And, uh, like it's it's a horror comedy though for me the comedy did not hit but Mm. it was still entertaining like i wasn't laughing but at the same time i just kind of like a little smile on my face like it's cute kind of okay i guess would be the way to put it hey cute's better than a big piece of shit so exactly like it was definitely i definitely was not mad that i watched it it was uh it was definitely worth watching and least entertaining i would say like a dollar 99 299 rental would be worth it uh this one is available on amazon itunes google play voodoo and amazon video fuck yeah it is yeah um i'm gonna talk about satan slaves to communion i was very excited for this movie um that was coming out on the shutty uh have you watched it yet scotty no you haven't we just talked about that actually sorry scott um way to listen to me heather i know i'm sorry we had the whole confusion with the it stuff at the beginning it's just throwing me off my game yeah i'll say threw us off our game threw it off our game completely so this is 119 runtime and it fucking feels like 119 runtime just so we're clear oh boy um 119 minutes sorry not hours minutes Feels like hours. So. Oh, no. A mother's terror is forever. So after moving from their home to an apartment building, a new terror awaits um, Rini's family. I, I, I will say the middle part of this, I really dug. Um, the ending confused me a little bit, but I do think that it's, again, you know, <laughs> those stories done right when it's international films. So right. I will leave it at that. Um, if you liked the first one, then yes, definitely. I would recommend watching this one. Uh, you do need to stay focused. It's only subtitled. There's no dubbing. So it's a subtitle movie only. Um, it's available in the shuddies. So all the shuddies. And it's available on AMC and Amazon channels. When we say shuddy, shutter. Both Shutter Canada and Shutter United States. But for Friday Nightmares, we're close enough friends with Shutter that we call it the Shuddy. So, so what what is it with you just like all of a sudden like uh, making sure to over explain oh, things? Because Tim does it and I feel like he doesn't mention me because I'm a better podcaster than he is. And mm. yeah, like uh, Horror for Dummies, by the way, is this show um it's two people who are aussie who talk about me and they call me a bitch and i just feel like this is my you know i'm explaining everything because maybe we have new listeners to tim Mm -hmm. everything about that tim (laughs) well i mean recording with tim next week we're doing our wrestling episodes in all fairness i mean luffy is the one in control of the show and writes and edits and you know does all wow tim's just there to watch the movies that's you know that's that's what we're gathering from what we've been hearing Oh man, that's that's <laughs> that cock. Love anyway, you, Tim. but yeah, the shuddy. So for those who don't know, shuddy is shutter. Um, but yeah, I I think it's worth it if you have shutter. You know, you might as well. If you like the first one, you'll probably enjoy the second one. I just didn't find it as good. That is just me. 
Uh, but sequels rarely are better than the original anyway. Usually, most that is true. Aren't like, oh man, the sequel's the best. That occasionally does happen, but most times, not that case. Yeah, I uh, I can agree with that. But yeah, this is one I'll probably be checking out sometime this weekend if I get the chance. Oh um, yeah, it'll be interesting to hear your thoughts on the last act. Okay, yeah, I'll just see. We see if I can brain. figure it out. Big smart brain. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the next one, I guess, and I'm the only one to watch this. What's the next one? Hold on, let me look. Oh no, yeah, it grew... I feel like I did watch that a while ago. Yeah, talk about it. I can't remember now. All right, so this is the one uh, Brandon Orlick recommended to us on uh, Friday night. Uh, it is called Grotesque. Uh, it's got an 80-minute runtime, and it's Mildred Moyer transforms from shy misfit to lovable psychopath when her back alley plastic surgery is botched. Mildred Ooh. finds herself living her best life as she unleashes brutal vengeance on all those who tormented her in the past. Um, this is, I will put this right here, extremely low budget, very low budget, um, and very tongue-in-cheek and silly. Uh, the reason Mildred is getting plastic surgery is because she has a nose a very 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 long comical nose and she gets it removed and never gets it replaced so she ends up wearing a mask to hide her face and then starts getting vengeance on every single person who has ever done her wrong or just said something wrong or said something just off off handedly to her and she gets a lot of people. She this minute this is only an eighty minute runtime, and she kills God. I'd say over fifteen people, and she has like quips like she reminds me of Angela from Sleepaway Camp Two. Interesting. Interesting. Like it's very it's it's not going to be like <clears throat> anybody's like high rated movie. Like I'm giving it like a six six and a half. But for the low budget and her acting, I just had a lot of fun with this. It's just very easy to watch made me smile and like chuckle and just watching her go on this massive killing spree was hilarious and entertaining um and this one is uh free on the tubi awesome nice good old tubi good old tubesies yep sometimes you just gotta take your shot at some of the uh low budget looking movies and you'll find some hidden gems it's like taking your shot with scott and i we may be low budget but we're hidden gems i'll hide a gem because we're ugly we do more Like, oh, trust me, I do a lot. We try way harder. <laughs> anyway. And I'm aimed to please. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the next movie is Hex. And honestly, out of fucking Lion Gate, stop picking up shitty movies like <laughs> this one. All right, this is an 88 minute runtime. Following a mysterious disappearance on a jump, a group of skydivers experience paranormal occurrences that leave them fighting for their lives. Do you like Final Destination, Rob Humphreys? Do you like to see Final Destination with parachutes? Welcome to Hex. <laughs> it's it's very much like, oh, this is a witch movie mixed with like, uh, uh, you don't have a choice over your destiny. The acting is not good. And she's falling it's, asleep describing yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cheese cheese. Um, if you can watch it through unnecessary, like, illegal means, go ahead and watch it. I don't think Lionsgate serves any fucking money for this film. It is, <laughs> like, I expect more from Lionsgate. When I watch a found footage movie, Day of Disappearance, and it's a better fucking quality film than something like this, we got problems, you know? So if you like skydiving, I don't know, this might be a movie for you. I was entertained enough by it, but I'm not coming with a strong recommendation here. It is available, though, on Amazon, iTunes, Google, um, and Microsoft Store. If for some reason you need to watch this movie super badly, but it's not. Even the even the cover is like a skull with a person skydiving. Oh, good <laughs> you know, I've seen worse while working out at the gym. So <laughs> I was able to work out and, and be entertained enough by it. So it worked out for me. That is fair. Right. All right. So I guess I'll jump on to the next one. I'm assuming you have not seen no, this one. No, I'm not All right. this one. Uh, this one is called A Town Full of Ghosts with a very short and easy runtime of 65 minutes. Yeah, so I, like, I like short and easy. Yeah. Uh, That's why I like Rob Humphreys. Oh. He's like yeah. a midget. He's like a little troll hanging out. Hey, you know, him and I are the same size. No, he's like probably five foot two. He just lies about being five foot seven. Because <laughs> then it makes his dong bigger. <laughs> he says he's oh, that's right, two. that's right. <laughs> Anyways. 
Uh, the synopsis is a couple moves into a forgotten ghost town with big plans to restore it, but soon discover the town has an evil secret. No. What? Oh, <laughs> they moved to an abandoned town and there's ghosts there. The fuck out of here, Scott. <laughs> Don't say. What a, what a unique plot line. I'm right? dying to know what happened, Scott. Oh, and you'll know exactly what happens because oh. it's that type of movie. But like, all right, right off the bat, this is a found footage. And, you know, when you do a found footage film, make sure you follow your own rules because found footage has a specific set of rules that it follows. And when you're saying, hey, this movie is happening, we found these tapes, they are unedited. When you say these, this has been unedited to show you what happened, don't edit in something that might happen in the in the future like they did in this movie because they kind of like jump ahead and like show a quick clip of a girl getting killed then jump back to the scene again don't do that also don't add music to your movie that is supposed to be unedited if it's going to have music make sure there's an excuse like a guy's carrying around something that's creating music for the theme of the show but he's basically a blogger trying to rebuild this place and yet yeah, easy watch i didn't hate myself for watching it but it seems like they could have added another 20 minutes to this to actually like flesh out what happens because boy it just kind of happens out of nowhere and you're going well that took a turn way too fast and unexpectedly all right i guess we'll go with it <laughs> but uh like all in all it wasn't bad but sounds like our nothing. ghost tour we went on <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> we'll, get oh, in a yeah, we'll get we'll get to that <laughs> that could have been a fucking found footage movie anyway <laughs> Yep. Where's this, this can... bad boy available, Scotty? Uh, this is also found on the Tubi. On the Tubi, okay. More Tubi, more Tubi slut movies that we're watching, all the fan footage. Mm, yeah, you guys yeah. like that fan footage, don't you? Mm. Tubi's like, we're going to shove it up your ass. You love that fan <laughs> footage. We're like, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> We like it so much. Give us um, more. Harder. Harder. <laughs> harder. harder. Um, the next movie I watched is The Sleep Experiment. Uh, this is an 84-minute runtime. It's based off a of creepypasta, by the way. Uh, two detectives begin an investigation into a disastrous secret military experiment where five prisoners were kept awake for 30 days in a sealed gas chamber. This is, I'm not going to lie, this is kind of a hard watch. It's, um, you're watching five people slowly go mad. Because oh, really? Because sleep, with, that's what happens, right? Um it's based off a creepy past the story. I will say that it was, um, you know, obviously a low budget film, but worked with their budget well. I don't want to give too much away yet again. And if you enjoy uh, the government experiments and like top secret shit gone wrong, I think you'll dig this film. You know, at a uh, 84 minute runtime, it's not overstaying anybody's welcome. If this sounds like something that would be up your alley, it is available on the iTunes, Vudu. Amazon Direct TV and Kojiko here in uh, in Ontario. So I don't know, maybe it's a fucking Canadian film. It sounds like something that would go on Kojiko. Uh, it's pretty dark. Like it's you know it's it, it almost I had to look it up to make sure it wasn't a real story. That's how dark it seemed. Um, okay, it's a creepy pasta, but it is definitely one of the more creepy pastas. So bravos to whoever made this into a film. Um, it's it's disturbing. The concept's disturbing. Interesting. Not the film isn't scary as much as right. The Right. So. And where can this be found? Oh, this can be found. Oh, I said it so obviously you weren't listening. iTunes, Voodoo, Amazon, Direct TV, and Kojiko. Now you can go back and listen to it twice when you <laughs> Oh I okay, Kojiko, I did hear that. I thought that was your same filming locations. No, that's why I said I think it's Ontario because Kojiko has it, and that's a very local satellite cable provider in Ontario. Yeah, yeah. So well, that it must be local. So. I was being sidetracked by the next gem that I'll be talking about. Oh, I understand. This supposed to be from your Pornhub searches. Damn straight. Nice. Uh, so this next one is called Two Witches with a 95-minute runtime. A uh, little uh, subtitle is Witches Don't Die Before <laughs> Leaving Their Legacy. <laughs> The synopsis is, a matriarchal witch passes on her sinister inherent inheritance to her granddaughter, triggering the most horrific curses. Eh, this movie, I gotta say, the first half hour disturbed me. Like, I was, I was all on board. I'm like, okay, this is dark. This is going places yeah. and showing things that 
I don't want to see. This is kind of fucked up. Um, and then the second half of the film happens, and it just kind of like switches to different characters, and the main character is not the greatest of actresses, mm. and then the story gets really weird and kind of convoluted and just like kind of just folds up on itself a bit. It's I don't know what the hell happened, but like man, it that if it would have stuck with that first half hour or so and kept yeah. rolling with it, I would have been a hundred percent behind this movie. But like right now, I'm just like they kind of just dropped the ball with the other the later half of it um but if you can find it for free or for rent for cheap go ahead i'd say it's worth that at least but uh it can be found on amazon itunes google play and arrow streaming nice well i'm gonna jump into the next crime film that i watched my best friend's actually oh yeah i think you watched this too didn't you no this is one that uh, i was curious about oh okay uh, it's a 96 minute runtime. The year is 1988 because it's super cool now to do shit in the 80s. Fuck yeah, it is. It's super cool because the 80s were the best time ever. Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade. After an evening in skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act differently, which leads Abby to suspect her best friend may be possessed by a demon. And I'll leave it there. And I hate when that happens. Uh, you know, and that happened when Scott was here. I got possessed by a demon. Um, luckily, I exercise the demon. demon, right? Uh, you know, this is a teenage film. This is for teenagers that want to like pretend that the '80s were cool. Like this generation want to be, oh yeah, man, I hate the '80s were sick. For any of us who lived through the '80s, we're gonna be like, and it wasn't like that. We're right. <laughs> Oh, but it's cute you know what it's a cute little film on crime if you got some maybe entry people to horror movies like maybe some preteens that are kind of like a little bit of horror fans i think it would be something they would enjoy i don't think most you know adult horror fans are going to overly enjoy it i and or you're really nostalgic for the fantasy version of the 80s not what the 80s really were this is available on prime both america and canada included with your prime membership if you want to watch it all right, good to know. I may watch this one at some point because it seems like it'd be at least an easy watch. Oh, yeah, it would be. Uh, the next one we both watched. Yeah, do you um, want to talk about it yeah. since it's so <clears throat> good? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but yes. He just cleared his throat to talk about how great this movie is. Let me clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, anyways, the next film we, that we both seen was called The Lair, directed by Neil Marshall, which most people will know for, I believe it was uh, The Descent, uh, most the battle sequences in Game of Thrones, and uh, either it was last year or the year before it was The Reckoning. A Royal Air Force pilot, Lieutenant Kate Sinclair, is on her final flight mission when her jet is shot down over one of the most dangerous rebel strongholds strongholds in Afghanistan. She finds refuge in an abandoned underground bunker where deadly man-made creatures known as ravagers, half-human, half-alien, and hungry for human flesh are awakened. Um, Right off the bat, I will say, if you know Neil Marshall and, like, his pedigree of what he's done, this is a beautifully shot film. Like, cinematography is gorgeous, locations are beautiful, it just looks pristine. Um, The effects creature effects yeah they're okay i mean not the greatest not the worst they're just kind of very blonde generic the gore is great some really cool looking practical effects i would i think i think it's practical effects but it looks really good the acting destroys this film yeah, oh, the acting's man. dreadful for someone like neil marshall who has a good budget like he does behind most of his films this was painful and so fucking cliche mm-hmm. um all i gotta say is like if you like creature features and you know my like and you're there to see the creature and the gore then you can watch it but i found this just very blah man, man, i agree um and that would be the only reason i think it's available for rent right i didn't look to see where it uh was. let me check where it's at i believe it's available for rent yeah it's available yeah, on itunes, iTunes Voodoo. google do microsoft store youtube i don't know you gotta really i don't know if you're a creature feature complete just go ahead but the acting's pretty painful yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What's the next one? Now, which one do you want to do? You want to talk about I, the remaining ones, or what do you yep, want to do? I want to talk about at least. The, I'm going to talk about this last one, and then I'm good. Okay. Uh, so the next one is. Let me pull the pull it up here. Where is it? There it is. All right. So the next one is Eating Miss Campbell. It is. I was shocked to see a trauma film, which I have not seen a new trauma film in quite some time. So I'm going. Oh boy, this could go either way. This could go. Mm-hmm. This is so dumb and entertaining and gory, or this is going to be dreadfully painful and mm-hmm. boring as shit. Mm-hmm. Um, thankfully, this was the latter. Uh, what is more poetic, an American? What is more poetic, an American than a high school? Oh, sorry. Let me. 
what is more poetic than the more poetic uh, what okay sorry my brain is mush you can Try do this, this again. scott i believe in you what is more poetic and american than a high school massacre oh uh, oh yeah absolutely <laughs> right true a vegan goth high school student falls in love with her new English teacher and develops a problematic taste for human flesh. <laughs> um, so, like most trauma films, this uh, touches on a lot of social issues in a very taboo way that uh, would some people would say is tasteless, while also still getting its point across. But this completely makes fun of uh, unfortunate, you know, gun shooting massacres that happen in schools and. Uh, veganism and all that stuff but like it makes fun of it to the point that this is like a british school and they decide to hire a an american superintendent because this american superintendent has this great idea let's do this contest and whoever wins this contest can either can do one of two things commit suicide or commit a school massacre with guns and if we do the gun violence thing, we will start getting sponsors from all these other American companies and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's, like, totally, like, just a slap in the face of what really happens in America. Like, and just very taboo. And But it's done in that trauma sense of way where it's just like, I mean, you're not far off. It's pretty sad that it's like yeah, that. right. Um, but uh, the main girl in this, I find her hilariously dorky and adorable at the same time. Uh, Lindsay Kane, who plays Beth Connor, she's basically this goth chick that's totally like i don't give a shit about anything i want to end my life i want to win this contest so i can kill myself and just but then she falls in love with this most weird weird like happy-go-lucky english teacher and you find out that this english teacher is trying to convince her to eat flesh and he and have human cannibalistic needs and it goes in a really ridiculous and silly uh path like Man, I didn't know what to think of this movie when I was watching it. I'm just like, wow, this is definitely trauma, but it is fun. It is shot well. The acting is perfect for this film. It's not like fantastic performances or anything all around, but it's like so tongue in cheek and it's done with like that dark style sense of humor that <clears throat> I recommend any trauma fan watch this. You'll have a blast with it. And anyone that's not a trauma fan, this might be a kind of like a foot in the door type trauma film for you because it's while it is offensive with what it talks about, it's still very kind of cutesy, entertaining, dark and gory all at the same time. It's everything that trauma is wrapped on one, just not as chaotic as some of their other films. Awesome. And where can we find this bad boy? Uh, this one can be found apparently nowhere yet. So soon to be dropped on VOD. Yep, so apparently this was a festival. Oh, nice. So it'll be dropped on uh, VOD soon. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely. I had fun with this one. Awesome. I'm going to save the one I most recent watch on Shutter till you watch it. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about that next time. But for older watches, so I did watch Pledge Night this afternoon uh, from 1990. It's, a, it's an 86-minute runtime. Oh, my God, is it dumb? Um, the first half, I'm like, is this even a fucking horror movie? And then, like, the final part picks up. I don't know. If you want to watch some cheesy fucking shit, like, <laughs> Davidson gave it a one star, and he's not wrong. It's not that great of a film. Uh, but I was entertaining enough with the... Uh, with the fucking villain that's in it. I thought he was really great. It's clearly a low budget from 1990. But I'll be honest, out of all the ones I've watched from 1990, it was a hidden gem for me in terms of like cheesy and fucking like over the top dumb. Uh, if that's your thing, it is available on the Shetty right now. Um, and it's also available on Amazon, AMC and Amazon channel, channel and Arrow. So for some reason, if you want to go back and watch Pledge Night because you missed it when it came out and 1990 you want to watch something that's like sorority ma sorority massacre but not good or not is it what's the one with the hell house or hell night hell night, oh, hell night yeah <clears throat> you want to watch hell night but not as good watch this <laughs> This is nowhere near what Hell Night is, but uh, good to know. Enough, right? I I was looking it up to see if I had rated it because I thought I'd watched it, but apparently I did not. Oh no, it's okay, Scott. You don't. I don't know. If you're really bored one day, maybe. Right. But like, it's anyway. I put it on because I just wanted something fluffy to watch this afternoon. But um, on to what's new, and that's probably the most important thing. As many of you know, Scott and I got together over Halloween weekend, which was very special for us. Sure just was. to say. Um, Scott and I never really got to spend Halloween together, and it was also for Scotty's birthday. 
And we did a couple of things. The first thing we did was a ghost tour. Uh, well, the first thing we did is stuffed our fat okay. faces full of sushi. We went to sushi, but that's not horror related, except for how much we ordered. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, chicken... it kind of was because they had co- the servers all yeah, wearing costumes. That's true. The servers were wearing costumes, and Scott and I ate like we hadn't eaten in 15 years. Fuck yeah. Uh, fuck yeah, we did. But that night, we dressed up as uh, Georgie and Pennywise. People saw the pictures on our Facebook. I don't think we need to you know beat our horse beat a dead horse about it but we looked great better than horror for dummies um Ooh. better than rob humphreys i don't know not as good as dave c because dave c's a friend so oh <laughs> shots fired to tim and fucking That's, humphreys. i'm, I'm oh my totally goodness. lying tim went all out for halloween oh he went nuts yeah. Maybe Daniel didn't dress up, but Tim certainly did. Um, but yeah, so anyway, we went for this ghost tour, and I had been on tours with this company several times. So this was the first time I was dating Scott at Downtown Hamilton. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Downtown Hamilton, there is a uh, homeless issue in Downtown Hamilton, mm-hmm. and much similar to Downtown Flint or Detroit or wherever a major city would be, you have the homeless population uh the ghost tour i thought was pretty good There was some good folklore we went to like some businesses some former hotels that were haunted the the tour guide did a great job of telling stories scott will give his thoughts and i don't know if he wants to talk briefly about our our, our night of found footage fucking disaster oh, might man. as well have been but i don't know scotty do you want to give an overview of your thoughts of the ghost tour yeah uh this was the first ghost tour i've ever been on um so this was exciting for me and never really got to like explore downtown Hamilton that much. Like we've stopped like at stores here and there, but we and never we've gone to the bar, but yeah. <laughs> it helps, yeah. But uh getting to explore and see a lot of really cool old architectural buildings mm-hmm. and get some really cool stories behind it and like you know, possible like ghost stories, like who knows if they're true or not, but it just adds yeah, to the fun. mythos of what's going yeah. on. Uh yeah, the storyteller did a great job. He was like he was very friendly, very uh, animated, and very into what he was doing. And yeah, a lot of cool like stories were told, a lot of history behind a lot of these buildings, a lot of beautiful structures. And then we get to one of the most beautiful structures there that I've seen, and that was this old Gothic-looking cathedral. And really wish I could have enjoyed the story for that one, but we had an issue that happened at this point. Um, one of the many homeless people that are part of downtown Hamilton was off to the side of where we're at. And you could already tell he was kind of agitated when we showed up, whether it's because we were all there just kind of interrupting his peace. He's obviously been drinking because there's several beer cans along the cement wall that we were Mm -hmm. walking by. Um, But he had a very beautiful pit bull with him that was not on a leash, but was just like very well trained, followed him around everywhere. However, one of the ladies decided to say something i don't i missed what was said so what happened was this gentleman was upset the police had just been there and we're not getting political about what the police involvement is with homeless people but i they probably said something to him i assume and he was upset maybe he's upset that we were there whatever the case was he did not threaten us let's make this clear the the confrontation happened when someone went to him yes um because what you do what you don't do when you run into like the homeless people like this is interact with them because they get very agitated well or interact in a negative way yes right obviously he could have mental health issues he's on the street scott and i are both very privileged to have homes to go home to and safe place to be you know just respecting to give him his space engaging with the storyteller you know treating him like another human being that you would pass in on the street. I wouldn't make conversation with a random other person on the street. I'm not going to bother this man. Exactly. So these ladies decided, one lady in particular decided that the fact that he yelled or got upset and dropped his backpack and the dog took off, I guess the dog got startled. Like when I say took off, walked away 10 feet, maybe. She decided that she was going to accuse him of animal abuse. And this turned it into a screaming altercation outside of this procedural. So unfortunately, the tour guide was already a nervous dude. And Scott and I were kind of up with him. And he's like, should I move? I said, yeah, we should move. I think Scott said something too, like, yeah, why don't we just move over? Yeah. So we walked to the other side. But unfortunately, this lady decided that she wanted to keep fighting with this dude. And now they're screaming at each other. There's kids on our tour who are crying um and we're just trying to walk around to the other side but she won't disengage she won't disengage it like she walks he walks away she she says says something something. and he comes back like it's just constant so 
our tour guide decides that he's going to call the police. Now, lots of people who listen to this podcast can have lots of different opinions on what the tour guide did there, but he was concerned about the safety of the group. So now we're waiting it, well, for the... And he even asked the group, do you want me to call the cops? And majority of the group said, yes, please. Yes, I did not say yeah, yes, like You and I just kind of walked <laughs> off to the side. And... Why don't we just continue on the fucking tour? She's an adult. If she wants to stay behind and fight with this dude, let her. Yeah. Because A, I've, I've grown up near Hamilton. I know the cops aren't going to show up because what are you going to say on the phone? Oh, this guy's yelling at me on the street. They'll say, walk away. <laughs> walk away, right? So anyway, he calls the cops. The cops don't come. There's this whole, like, we're 20 minutes now at this church. Eventually, the dude, and we won't go on to it, he leaves with the dog. So no one is harmed. He leaves with the dog. At no point was the dog harmed. I didn't see him hit the dog. Nothing happened to the dog. So everyone, the dog was fine. So we're 20 minutes well, delayed, and it's, sorry, go ahead. I'll say, also, don't forget, while this is all going on, oh, we a, see car accident, yeah. a car accident happens right next to us. Which the cops show up for, by the way. Yeah, the cops show up for that. <laughs> Which was even funnier. So, and then, and then when he walks, uh, when when this guy walks away, he walks into the middle of the road, and just because he's angry, he's deciding to just stand in the middle of the road with his dog. And I almost, I just wanted to sneak a picture of him because he looked like something from a horror film because he just stood dead still, mm -hmm. staring right at us until a bus drove up and he was blocking the bus's lane. And the bus driver stops and just gets on the mic and just goes, "Move or I'm calling the police." And the dude just kind of stands there, arms out, and like just kind of like trying to be intimidating, and then he just walks away but i'm just like man that guy just doesn't give a fuck <laughs> well he was upset you yeah. know and i think that the reason why scott and i bring this up is because it pulled us out from the atmosphere of the ghost tour yeah you know this was a situation that could have been avoided and even when we started this tour these people were from hamilton i think scott was the only outsider that wasn't from the community you know, if you've been to downtown Hamilton, I've had a woman chase me and call me a bitch and a slut and she's going to cut me. And when I was going to get one of my COVID vaccines, you know, it's it's an unfortunate case in our society that there are people with mental health issues that live on the street. And yeah. they are much worse. They are much, much higher risk of getting harmed than they are harming us. Yeah. And typically, if you don't engage, and this goes with any random stranger on the street, if you don't engage with a random stranger in a negative way, they're probably not going to engage with you. Yeah, Generally exactly. speaking, right? You're going on a downtown Hamilton ghost tour. You should be aware of that. So it's just a shame because here I was like, oh, Scotty and I are loving this tour. And then this conflict happened. And the tour guide, I think, you know, I do believe he thought he was acting in the best interest. But unfortunately, it just pulled everybody out of the ghost story telling. And honestly, um, I think he was scared. I think he was really, I think he was a nervous dude. And I think he felt responsible for this woman. I actually emailed afterwards. I, oh, I, did forwarded, you? Yeah, I forwarded the email that I got response because I wanted to acknowledge that he, the tour guide did a great job of handling the situation, that he did what he felt like. And it was no by shape mean his fault. Right. Um. You know, you can't control what other adults do and i'll leave it at that so but yeah it, anyway by the time we did that the, like he told a little bit about the church and there was like an old burial outside and we got to the last building and you know he did his best to pull us back in but up to that point the tour was awesome and i'm glad scott still had a good time yeah. because um you know other stuff had happened that day <laughs> I, I just wanted scotty to have like the best birthday ever and now you know we're watching this film footage film like we're gonna end up on cops you know what i mean just gotta right. be the ones being like this was an unnecessary situation that could have been avoided by all parties involved um so it was a very good learning experience for both of us and we you know we still had a good time we came back and we watched cabinet and curiosity so yeah. you know it wasn't it which we watched three episodes of which was great um so that was fun and then the next day we had pumpkin carving so we want to thank everyone for voting <laughs> Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We did pumpkin carving at my place. My friend's daughter came over and painted pumpkins. And we just had a really, really great afternoon. And then we went to Haunt Manor. Mm. And uh, this was where people were supposed to come up and yell at you and scare you. So it, it made a little bit more sense uh, that that was happening on that event. Uh, what did you think of Haunt Manor, Scotty? Oh, I had such a fucking blast. It was so much fun. Um, like how, like you were even saying, like, oh man, this line is taking forever. Like, because it was, it was like yeah. an hour and twenty it, minutes. We waited a long time in line to start the the haunt like, experience. I think just being in that 
atmosphere and just watching all the haunt actors showing up, I didn't even realize I'm how I'm glad you it dug it. Hey, as long as you were happy, that's all that matters. Yeah, because I was just taking pictures of everything because that's what I do. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fucking tourist. I do that type yeah. of shit. And yeah, when we got to the first one, which was like a haunted barn and finally oh, got yeah. inside. Shit. Oh, man. <laughs> great. Well, Heather made sure I was in front of her because she didn't matter. want the, Yeah, she didn't want the scare actors to scare her. However, I get startled really easily. So I should explain why I get startled really easily and I jump, but then they chase me because they think like I'm scared, but I'm not. And this happened. Scott saw it fucking happen. Happens yep. all the time. Well, I was saying, however, one thing she made the mistake of is she was behind me. And a lot of haunt actors usually wait till the group passes before they come out to scare so a lot of these scaring and startling happened to poor heather who was behind me because the actors would come up behind her and scare and then they'd stop start following her and she's going you, you got me once you're not gonna get me <laughs> I mean, like, like, when they're like fake machetes right <laughs> um pretty funny a lot of it i seen coming uh there was only one time where heather got startled which startled me and that was uh the lady that was hanging in the rafters that came flying yeah. down because yeah. you screamed and it startled me made me jump i went oh fuck was actually yeah. what i said there was one part where scott and i had to crouch down and we we're like our knee <laughs> yeah like my back my knees <laughs> But and, that, it was a very good haunt, though. The barn was a very good yeah, haunt. Yeah, I will say there were two specific spots in that haunt that got me. One is I was in front. We were walking, and it was all foggy. And I'm just walking, and, you know, it's very low visibility. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there is a haunt actor in my face. I don't know where he came from. He just walked from the shadows into my face. I'm going, ah! Just, <laughs> I was looking straight ahead, too, and I didn't even see him. And he just appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> scared the hell out of me then the other time was when we were, had to crouch underneath the little lower door you start walking and i looked down and my foot was not nothing like because there was just a clear plexiglass sheet and you can see down where the other people that are going in are so it gives you that fear of like oh shit i'm about to fall yeah and it got me really fucking good on that one yeah it got me too uh, but yeah, that one was a lot of fun. Then we get out of there and we uh, kind of go in this like pavilion part and just kind of chill for a second, then get in line for the haunted hayride. Oh man, this is uh, this is what I was looking forward to. To me, this was like the crown jewel. I hope Scott liked it as much as I did. I thought it was a oh, blast. These people went all out yeah. for this. This was so fun. Like I was, I don't, I don't think I got scared except for one time. Like I don't get scared easily at this stuff because I'm more just like, as Heather can get a test. I'm the one that's like talking to the scare actors, like, oh, can I live I think here they with wanted you? to punch you in the face at parts. I think they were like, shut the fuck up, dude. I mean, some of them were like, I was like, oh my God, God's going to get beat up by the scare actors. It's going to turn into the fucking haunt 2019. <laughs> well, but before we got into this one, like, uh, I do got a joke because uh, there was a a dead bride that kind of walking around silently. And I told Heather, I'm like, well, if she comes back around and tries to scare me, I'm going to ask her to marry me. And <laughs> Uh, she sure enough, she comes back around and she stops right in front of me and just stares at me. And I just look at her and go, oh, will you marry me? And she just instantly turns her head and walks the other way. Poor Scott. <laughs> like, I got story, to die. Story of his life. <laughs> um, on yeah, the, uh, the haunted hayride. Sorry. Yeah. I want, I want you to get to the good part. Well, I'm just kidding. I'm building up story. Oh, okay? Fuck's sake, she talks so much. <laughs> <laughs> It was a big night for you, though. In all fairness, it was a big weekend for you. We did it was. A lot. Um, but yeah, the Haunted Hayride was a lot of fun. Because uh, yeah, it wasn't technically a hayride, because there was no hay that you're sitting on, but it was Fuck like... <laughs> but it was like this trailer that you're on. Like, and there was, what, I'd say, what, 20 people? Yeah, they probably packed it too full. You, we sat in the middle, and usually, like, if you sit on the outside, you get more scared, because obviously the actors jump down, and they... Yeah. But... They jump onto this fucking thing. Yeah, I was they not jump expecting on that. And they like scare you and shit. And so Scott was wearing his Friday the 13th t-shirt. And I said to him, oh man, I hope Jason's going to jump on. Because I've been on this before and he did. And lo and behold. Here comes Jason. Right? Hops himself up and he looks over at me. And I look at him and go, Jason, I think your mother's been looking for you for a while. And you could just tell he's like, oh, God damn it. And he walks he's over like, to me. This guy's not taking me fucking seriously. Yeah. <laughs> He walks over to me and just raises his weapon, like his machete. And then Heather's like, show him your shirt. I'm like, oh, yeah. So I open my sweater and go, look, Jason. And like the most adorable thing happens. He just kind of stops, best. lowers his weapon, and then just slowly points a finger and touches the mask on my chest. And then slowly points that finger back up to his face like me. Oh, my <laughs> God. It was the yeah, best. Jason. It was the and best. Just, 
And he just kind of nods, pats me on the head, and walks away. <laughs> it was honestly made the fucking night. It was so good. Oh, it uh, cracked me up. And it, then, yeah, there was a, a, I think, like a clown with a chainsaw that flew over our heads. Yeah. That yeah. scared me. That one got yeah. me. Yeah. And then there was a guy dressed up as Leatherface that chased the way in. It was fun. Like, it was really, really fun. And they had this, like, video playing. And it was it was really, really fun. So the last part of this haunt so there's so we get off the wagon and there's three haunts in one and this is late at night just so we're clear like they're closing up shop soon so these actors are tired it's cold you know it's it's been a long night and there's this little six-year-old in front of us named zoe and um, oh my god scott and i will share on briefly on zoe but zoe was like talking to all these actors at one point there was a lady's like i'm a witch i'm gonna take your teeth and she's like are you that tooth fairy I like the tooth fairy and like straight out full of fucking conversations with with these scare actors like to the point even, they couldn't stay in character anymore yeah, because she was like, they just, just like they just gave up their character and just started talking uh-huh because uh, there she's just going bah, 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 i'm zoe oh, bah, 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 just like chatting their ears off it was Shit. so fucking adorable it really was so we go through this haunt right and this we eventually catch up to them because they're trying to space you out but you you move through and like one point scott left me behind and i chased after him he doesn't remember that part he went so quickly i was like Gah! like down the hallway and away from me i know you never you left me behind i i had no idea yeah if this is hot i'd be dead right now and you would be not recording for anyone <laughs> so anyway this little girl's like flipping off these characters like i know this is a haunted house and i'm not afraid of you like she fucking like not it's nuts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like we we literally were not scared because we had the power of Zoe with us, and no. she was just talking smack to everybody that jumped out. She talked smack to these actors. It was hilarious. And she she was like greeting some of them, and then some of them were chasing her, and she's like, "I'm not scared of you. I'm not scared of you." There was a clown with like a fucking hat, hatchet or something. And he's going, "I'm going to get you, little girl." And she's like, "You don't scare me. You don't scare me." As she walks away, the clown actor walks back by us, and he goes, "Man, she's a feisty one." <laughs> yeah, like she just didn't give two fucks but we, anyway we the final and, and the final haunts were fine like i'm not criticizing yeah. the actors by the time we got to exiting the one you could tell they were all like yeah it was fucking done it was 11 o'clock which is when yeah. we should be shutting down right and it was cold like it was cold they weren't wearing a lot of clothes because like, they're wearing you know haunted outfits um yeah. we used to be dave c excited he was like oh is that a fucking strip club that i missed no Fuck yeah it was zombie no, strip Dave. Clubs. It, it was it was they were wearing halloween costumes um but yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a really, really good time. I was just so happy that Scotty enjoyed it. It was nice to do. It was basically a weekend of Halloween stuff yeah. that we were able to do together that both of us really, both of us like horror movies. So it was great. So we were both able to do it and we like book it season. So we won't, we know Halloween is come and gone. So we're recording this much later, but we had a blast. And I'm so glad Scott had fun despite any of the hiccups that we experienced uh, during the weekend. Yeah, I had so much freaking fun with it. It was I'm so glad that I was able to come out there. And you always are an amazing host and just took care of me while I was there and just made showed me a great weekend. And yeah. Wow, it was fun. It was definitely one of the better Halloweens I've had in a while. Well, Halloween birthday. It was your birthday yeah. present. So doing these events was a birthday gift from me to Scott. Much like AW was a birthday gift from Scott to me and we had a really, really good time, and who knows? Maybe he'll come back out next year, and we'll go to Fear Farm, which is another haunt, and maybe we'll do another ghost tour. Who yeah, knows? I'm totally down. Um, but yeah, the both were ghost walks. Hamilton Ghost Walks strongly recommend. All the tours have been fabulous, and Haunt Manor, located in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, excellent bang for your buck. Recommend it. Um, check it out. They're worth it. 100%. Yeah, this was just a blast. So yeah, so um, we're going to hear from one of our Legion podcast friends. And after that, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some Thai horror. So after these messages, we'll be right back. Cha-cha. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, uh, necrophilia. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. 
I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept little popping history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at twelve years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did you watch movie. this shit at twelve? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about some Thai horror, uh, which is actually one of my favorite genres of, or favorite countries for horror, I should say genres, favorite country for horror. I love the original Shutter, which unfortunately couldn't find um, yeah. for this episode. Fuck, that's it. But watch it. If anyone hasn't seen it, please watch the original Shutter. Uh, but we chose two other movies, one that's available on Netflix and one that is available on the Shutter. Uh, so I'll let Scotty get into it, the first one. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about is called Inhuman Kiss. The release date was March 14th, 2019. An innocent young woman is unwitting host to a Krasu, a demon who causes havoc in her village as it searches for vengeance at night. Wow, uh, this one, I really freaking loved it. Uh, it has, you know, me being the romantic guy, has the love story that's in this. Um, but this is like, a, it's basically about this uh, young girl. I forget her name, um, but uh, she is basically the village doctor slash nurse while a war in Bangkok is going on. Like they're on the outskirts of Bangkok. And so she's just treating a lot of ailments that are happening in the town and stuff like that. And then she just so happens to start showing these like rashes on her chest that she starts covering up. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the sign of the folklore spirit creature that Thailand is, uh, that Thailand has called the Krasu, which is a, female spirit entity that is a severed head that floats around and I, f I guess it's like haunts and steals away children is considered it's considered the true folklore or whatever um and in this it's very similar like she, like one night she all of a sudden just starts feeling this agonizing pain and her head detaches from her body and then she's just like shown flowing flying through the sky with like these red tentacles coming out from under, under her neck and like basically eating livestock and stuff like that and then the next day she wakes up and she's back to normal yeah and then but then uh you get this uh group of hunters that show up that have been hunting cross you throughout all these different villages and they had heard rumors that there was one here due to one of the child one of her childhood friends who was away in bangkok who lost his parents uh, saw, attached himself to these hunters and basically said there's Krasu in this village, basically just to use as a means for him to get back to this village and have escort. And because he didn't know there was any, anything going on in the village at all. He just wanted to get back to his friends and the people that he knew in this village. And then, yep, the hunter starts trying to like go out at night and try to find the Krasu. They're starting to see like signs of it and everywhere. So he's like for sure looking for it. And yeah, it just continues going on like that where they Later on, you get another folklore. I think it was the, what was the male's one's name? The Karang? No, I don't remember. I thought it was just the one. Sorry. I didn't realize there were two different ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look it up real quick. I didn't like this movie as much as you did. Really? I found it kind of boring and a chore to get through. Really? Yeah, that's why I'm kind of letting you take the lead. I do think the folklore telling, like, I'll be honest, a third act picked up for me. But the beginning, I found it a chore. I thought it was 30 minutes longer than it needed to be. Um, it was not my favorite Thai movie. No, it's like, okay. Yeah, like for me, but that, yet again, that's me and that's my opinion, right? Like, it's just, I found it, I think it was a good reflection of the Taiwanese uh, folklore culture. And I thought it was a good job of, you know, who was involved in it and the sacrifices that had to be made. But I found it boring. Okay. Yeah, I didn't find it boring at all. Right. So that's why it. it's good that you're talking about it, because I'll be honest, I don't have much to say. I I I will say good folklore. If you like folklore, it's it's well made, well solid acted film. 
just wasn't for me. That is fair. And uh, I looked it up. It is the male version is Krahang, K-R-A-H-A-N-G. And while Krahang is supposed to be basically the same type of spirit where it's the head gets severed and floats, they changed it up for the movie and it's more he becomes a demon that uh, feasts on the heart of the Krasus. Okay. And so that though, you end up finding out that the hunter, the main hunter, is actually a Krahang, and he infects her best, one of her best friends. Yeah, I figured that part out. I just found it honestly strange. <laughs> no, yeah, like <laughs> see, and for me, I, I love. Like, the- when is this gonna be fucking over? <laughs> You know, I loved all the characters in this, so like I was so invested in the characters yeah, when nothing totally. was even happening on screen. Like I just loved the dialogue between them. Like I just felt this was just a very good folklore horror uh, that was, you know, obviously with a big budget like Netflix gives or at least yes. bought. Like yeah. it was really well done. Like some of the effects, like with uh, Krasu, which are going to be hard to pull off practically, looked decent. Though there was some CGI spots where it looked silly. But I just found the folklore in this to be just very fascinating. And I looked up the folklore, like, and it actually is real. Like, that's, like, stuff that the, in East Asia they believe in. Um, but, and they have different names for it in different uh, countries over there. Um, but, yeah, I really just dug this. Like, this is a high recommend for me. I loved it. Awesome. I'm glad you liked it, and I'm glad you can recommend it. I would say if you like Poor Core, check it out. I like the second one a lot more. Yeah, I'll say this one's more, I would say this one's more fantasy than horror. Would you agree with that? This one? Oh, this one that we just watched, you mean yeah. Kiss? Yeah, it's probably why you liked it more than I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the next one is pure fucking horror. Oh, it Not sure crying. is. So the next one is, let me pull up the Google Docs here. All right. Next one is The Medium, released July 14th, 2021. In the Isan region of Thailand, a shaman realizes that his nephew, I thought it was a her. It's a she, but that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I, I was. No, no, you're right. You're okay. right. Realizes that her nephew has been possessed. However, the goddess that appears to have taken possession turns out not to be as benevolent as she first appears. Oh, an interesting that's... review. It's an interesting yeah, I'll say because uh, yeah, because the benevolent one that they're talking about doesn't actually first appear. It is multiple spirits that possess this body. Oh. It is a very good found footage oh. film. This Bam. is a this is how found footage should be made. It is a fucking excellent mockumentary. It's filmed like a mockumentary. Yeah, and it is very good. My a scene that stands out to me in this film is the ball pit scene. Where she's fully, slowly changing, or this is the slide where she pushes her friend over. Yes, I was gonna say because I'm like, I remember hearing interviews because I'll let everybody know this was the first time watch. I missed it last year. I didn't yeah. get around to it, and I heard people reviewing it and talking about like the ball pit, cre- ball pit scene creeping them out. And I'm going, well, I seen the ball pit scene, but the creepier part was at the slide. Yeah, the slide part. That's what it is. Um, and just her in general, the slow descent into the possession is extremely well done in this oh, film. It's it is it is what a mockumentary should be. The disturbingness at the end, not an okay ending, not an okay film. Um no. you know, and I think that that's yet again, this is what I love about Thai horror. Um, this is what I I I go to when I'm looking at any kind of Thai horror Thai horror, Japanese horror. Um things don't usually have happy endings and and there's a reason why and it's because the fucking evil wins and i think this movie i don't i know we spoil a lot in this in this one um but i want to be careful because i do think this is a movie that needs to be watched if you have missed this one from last year watch it like watch this movie yeah, because uh, I knew little bits about it, but I didn't know. I just knew that a lot of people loved it. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I really wish I would have watched this last year because this definitely would have won a couple different awards for me and been yeah. in my top 10 for sure. Because this movie was in fucking incredible, yeah. unsettling, very creepy, uh, doing the mockumentary style. They had a reasoning for everything they did, where the cameras were set up, who was filming, why they were filming. Everything made sense there. Um, yeah, like just the story like just unfolding in front of you is just fascinating and you're just wanting to know what the hell is going on and you're like curious on what's happening to poor Mm -hmm. mink Mm -hmm. because she is just yeah she slowly starts changing and it's more just like aggression at first and just it's a great possession it's a very realistic possession mockumentary like it's a possession mockumentary found footage film done so well you know it it took three subgenres and it combined them in a beautiful atmosphere 
Like it's oh, it really did. Right. And it's like it's a very slow burn, but yes. man, when it gets to that final act, shit hits the fucking fan. Absolutely. It is incredible. This movie uh, it's about a two-hour runtime, and it deserves its runtime. It is a very, very good film. It is a very heavy film. Uh, it's a very dark film, and I think it's one of the better exorcism films that have come out. Taiwanese horror at its best um, in this film. Yeah, I'm going to say this may be my favorite exorcism film now. Awesome. Awesome. Like, I loved this. This was dark like I like my films to be dark, dark and twisted. This one had that nice had a great story and a mystery leading up to it and once again it's an exorcism film where it's not uh the north american christian god it no. was a different god and i love that that it's and like, you can really get behind the protagonist here like you really want them to be successful like you're yeah. like holy fuck holy fuck like the movie pulls emotion from you watch this film i know scott and i usually go into more detail i don't want to i want to i want to skate the surface Give some tidbits and you fucking watch this movie. <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, it is worth your time. 100%. This movie right. was fucking 10 out of 10. Amazing. So Thai horror. Um, and also I recommend Shudder um, because that's a great one. Yep. And uh, one that we were choosing between uh, this and the other one, The Maid. Another the maid high recommend. Excellent. You know, they even did The Pool, which is fun. One yeah. about the guy with the alligator. That's a different type of Thai film, but it's also very good. Thai films are where it's at. So please, you know, if you haven't had a chance to dive down to them, please do. Um, now we kind of loosely talked about it in our in our 2022 section. We won't say which films specifically, but it's brought up a couple of different times. Um, so out of the dark, I said to Scott, what about cannibalism? Not like mm. us eating each other, but like in yeah. general. <laughs> and barbecue <laughs> sauce on each other, ketchup. Excuse on. me, Biff, while I take a bite out of you. <laughs> Right? And Scott has his cat. The cat's like, fuck off. The cat just licked him back. He's like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. So I find that every once in a while we get this kind of burst of cannibalism films. Uh, is You know, Cannibal Holocaust came out. Scott and I have both seen it, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? Uh, that one I found was more of a mockumentary. Oh, it's a mockumentary film footage, obviously. And then we get movies like Raw, mm -hmm. which is a accidental cannibalism film where the young lady in it is, you know, her family comes from cannibal lines and she's trying to avoid becoming a cannibal. Which is yeah, but like that, kind of basically a uh, overarching story of veganism. Right. Um, there's also the Silence of the Lambs, which I think has probably one of the more famous cannibal scenes in it, or, you know, and, and Hannibal where they eat Ray, Ray is it Ray Lada's? Ray Liotta and yet in Hannibal. <laughs> right. Um, and then we have other movies that have come out in the last couple of years that involve cannibalism, you know, movies like Alive or situations like Alive where you have no other choice but to eat another human because it will, and, uh, you don't, you die. And in the 70s, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Right. And that has continued to kind of develop through or, you know, the hills. The Hills Have Eyes, Hills have eyes yep. uh, Wrong Turn, you know, like there's a lot of movies that base itself on cannibalism. And you have a couple of different genres of it. You have the outsiders that are seen as mutants or a subculture that chooses to eat people. You have refined, where people who are rich of value want to eat people. Yep, but they go to the lengths to cook it and make it like a fancy meal and right have and, wine with it and all that stuff and then you have the accidental cannibals that end up doing it for whatever reason it happens and they become cannibals and it's it's an interesting story arc i find because it kind of builds on the belief of the taboo of hu eating human flesh um so the question i wanted to ask scott is do you think that if you eat human flesh, you become addicted to it? Do you think that rumor is true? Or do you think that's just to prevent us from consuming each other because of getting diseases or whatever, especially like during the plague or other outbreaks and possibly having the germs come into our body? Yeah, I don't think you get addicted to it. I think that is just a myth, especially that came from the Wendigo uh, mythology. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's um, a good point. I think it would be just like eating anything else. Like you may be like, oh, God damn, that was really fucking good. I wouldn't mind having it again sometime, but you wouldn't be addicted. Do you like, think you could tell the difference? 
honestly, like if if you did it the Hannibal Lecter way, I doubt it. Like if you're like sauteing it up and cooking it with all the different vegetables and actually, you know, cooking it properly, I bet you it tastes like most other meat. So when we look at the movie Fresh that came out, remember the movie Fresh that came out earlier yeah. this year? That talks about cannibalism in it as well. Yeah, and, and he but, ends up forcing her to eat some of Right. And that and it's a class thing that people pay a lot of money. To me, that is the most accurate to where I think cannibalism comes from. I think, yes, that you would have communities in different parts of this world that have engaged in cannibalism, ate their elderly as a sign of respect or passing, for sure. But I feel that whenever we see cannibalism in that kind of like rich eating the poor, it's there was another movie that it was kind of like that. Wasn't it um, the weird one we watched where the society or something like that? High society. Oh, yeah. Society. Society, right? Similar. Like, I mean, but they weren't cannibalizing. They were like having the weird uh, orgy shit. Yeah, the I shunting guess. orgy. <laughs> but true, that's basically true. But they were basically consuming the poor. Or even like, you know, Sweeney Todd. The yeah. movie, right? Where it's based on like a musical. It's funny because it gets sprinkled in in some of the most weirdest movies. You know, you have it in the wrong turn series as like these these freaks. And then you have it in a movie like um Alive, which is based on a true story where they had to do it because they had no other choice. Yep, same with it's like interesting. The, yep, same with like the Dahmer party that got lost in the Colorado Mountains or wherever it was. Right. The California and then uh then also uh Alfred Packer, which that cannibal the musical is ba- like loosely based off of where you know you're with a party, you get lost out in the middle of uh these mountains in the wilderness, nowhere else to go, and you're starving, and well, one of your one of your uh friends or people that you're with passes away. Well, you're hungry enough gotta eat something to survive right there's even the parents movie from 1989 of like the parents that cook like there's been a lot when we brought up this this topic all i could think of at the time was you know silence of the lambs green inferno cannibal holocaust i didn't even think of fresh which was a great movie that came out yeah that totally like talked about the high class vision of cannibalism some recent movies that we talked about in our 2022 and i think it's an interesting taboo topic that's always been able to be inserted into horror and to add that extra level of creepiness like oh you know even when we saw the movie do you remember the farm back from 2018 yep. and people were kept like farm animals and then they were harvested mm-hmm. right um it but I'm wondering now, you know, if the kind of the hillbilly, like, you know, the, the the freaks or the people that are, you know, cannibals that are scary looking or whatever, the like Texas Chainsaw Massacres and the Wrong Turns are being replaced by the more, you know, the rich eating the poor. This has become a, a specialty and the people being tempted into it, right? Like, you'll taste the human flesh and then you'll never want to turn away. Like, if that's becoming more of the the horror flavor you know what i mean like it's almost like it's like lower class cannibalism and high class cannibalism isn't that kind of interesting that either in in, and even in cannibalism they're making class systems yeah i mean right it's it's interesting and uh fuck what was the one that had the uh original and the remake like back to back that were both very similar it was like we we something we are oh we are what we are we, yeah, are. we are what we are yeah yeah, yeah that was another, another one, one where they're like yeah. cooking the cooking the meals like they're just like a dinner for the family and right and you're right that's actually a really good example where it's like a whole family affair and the girls trying to avoid it and get out of that situation yeah it's really Anyway, there's a lot of different cannibal movies that are out there. And it's just, it's, it's fascinating genre. Um, I don't know how I feel about being addicted to human flesh. I don't think that's really a thing, but I think we are discouraged to doing it because I think there's a lot of diseases more than anything else that I think you could catch by, I guess if you cook the meat or whatever, I don't know how long you need to cook something for. I don't think I could eat a person though. I eat meat. Like I eat cow and pig and chicken. So I don't, I'm not trying to put myself on any kind of pedestal here because I do eat a living creature. I'm not a vegan or vegetarian. Like, I would never, like, I'll just put this on the record. I would never eat another human. That uh, would not be a cannibal. However, just so if, we're clear, if we were in a life and death situation, I died. I would understand if you had to eat me to survive. I was like, a situation like that, we'll see what happens. My I, tummy I would, has a lot of fat on it. I feel like there's some really good meat there. 
maybe my boobies and maybe my bum bum. Like I would Fair go enough. for that. That's probably where the best meat is. So. And you know, I'm all about eating ass, so it works. Yeah, right? yeah, right? you're barbecuing <laughs> it up. <laughs> but I was gonna say, but yeah, if someone like decided to trick me and cooked a meal for me and it ended up being human flesh and I didn't know, and then they told me later, I'd probably be like, hmm, well, shit, didn't want to be a cannibal, but I guess I am now. <laughs> right? Like I would feel like because you always see like the the visceral reaction, like in fresh or whatever, they throw up afterwards, right? Right. Like, they're so disgusted. And they vomit it, you know, and I, I, it's such a hard thing to say how you would actually feel in that moment. I just think it's such a taboo um, issue. And I know we've talked about it in our previous episodes. I'm pretty sure we, when we used to do topics, I think we did cannibal. Movies, yeah, we did. Right? A, we did do a cannibal. We one. did a cannibal one. So, you know, I think it, for me, the reason why we're resurfacing it is because we're just seeing it in a different way now. Yeah. We're seeing a much more high class cannibalism coming out in, in our films. And I just think it's really, really interesting. Right. Yeah. It's a, and like like I say, we've seen a couple of different cannibal films this year already too. Right. And you could argue that vampirism was one of the first form of cannibalism, same with zombies. Though I guess zombies are subhumans. I could just see some horror fan out there right now, like Tim Davis getting upset about something that I said like that. Um I mean he, and werewolf too. I mean Oh, don't say that. Tim's gonna get even more mad. Oh my god, Halloween ends gonna look like nothing now. He's gonna be so <laughs> fucking angry with us. Um Don't worry, but, Tim. There you don't have to watch this you don't have to listen to the show. There is no werewolf at the end. None, none, we promise. Um, but I, I don't know. And I feel like Campbell films are kind of slowly losing their creep, but also trying to create it in a different way. Like you're being forced to consume it and now you're disgusted by it. Or in one of the movies that we saw recently, um, you engage consensually, which has happened in the past. That is a, a historical thing that has mm-hmm. occurred. And then you maybe change your mind about yep. how you feel about it. Um, I think it's a really, really interesting subgenre, and I'm interested to see where they go, where movies go and horror goes with it more, because I feel like you've got to constantly up the ante to shock people. Yeah, I think long gone are the days of uh, portraying uh, uh, Aboriginal tribes as yes. cannibals now. Yes. I mean, well, obviously, we yes. had we had Eli Roth doing Green Inferno, but that was his nod to Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, and like there, I mean, there are, are there are tribes that do it. They but don't it's done out of respect for elders and respect yeah. I'll say they are right? hunting us down and eating yeah. us. Like, no, no, they're it's like a. No, so they probably have a right to. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, if they could get their hands on an American, they'd get a lot of meat. Yeah, but we taste good. Like white people, like white Americans, like you and I are like a white Canadian. We drink a lot of fucking dairy and shit. Like we probably True. wouldn't taste that great. We probably would taste yuck yuck. They'd probably be like, oh. Well, from what I've heard, meat eaters are not the best, uh, like in animal world too, meat eaters are not usually the yeah. best meat. Right. Um, and like, I, I, I definitely, I have a lot of respect for people that are vegan and vegetarian. I don't make fun of that. I, you know, good for I just men. couldn't do it. I like, you know, maybe I could, if I went to, you know, I said I couldn't do it, but then I watched these documentaries and it upsets me like the farm thing where like. 2018 where how animals are treated like i just don't want to know and i have no problem saying i choose to be ignorant and i choose to be uneducated right because it's hard for me when i think about it like it's it's hard for me and i'm selfish and i'm choosing to consume meat because of that still and that's a fault in my character i guess right. because and shit 90 percent of probably what i eat since i'm from america probably isn't real meat anyways <laughs> no nah, it's just fake meat it's actually yeah. people it's all um, like sodium and other shit and no, preservatives. They're just, and... they're just they're just processing out people, you know. Yeah, we're doing soil and green. Right, that's right. So it's anyway, it's an interesting genre with Thanksgiving coming up in in America. Mm. Um, Scotty has his Thanksgiving celebration coming up in a couple of weeks. This will be this episode will be released just before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in Canada has already passed. Man, I hope my family cooks up a good human for us. Right? Mm-hmm. Yum, yum, yum. Get that turkey baster ready. Get it ready. Yeah, it's, it will, I, I definitely have a few cannibal movies I recommend. I think Raw is an exceptional film. We Are What We Are. I think it's excellent. Fresh, I think it's excellent. Uh, Feed Me, I think it's excellent uh trying to think of some other ones that have come out recently that i really enjoyed well and then there's some other just like hidden gem ones like i mean i'm shocked you haven't said it yet i'm very disappointed in you heather cannibal the musical oh yes cannibal the musical one of the best (laughs) fucking movies of all time my apologies scott uh yes definitely everyone should watch cannibal the musical uh 
I think we are. We are. And that's a really good one that you brought that one to the table. And Fresh was actually really good. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, fuck, what was the name of the one uh, from the 90s? Oh, God. Parents? Not Parents. That's from 1989. Uh, no, it's uh, another based off the Wendigo style myth. Uh, fuck, oh. Fuck, fuck. Ravenous. 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 Yes. A lot of people like Ravenous, actually. Yeah, that one is Very really good. It's kind, of, it's kind of a comedy in a way, but it's really good and like also kind of dives into the whole Wendigo myth and the more human flesh you eat, the more powerful you become type story. Yeah, let's see, it's got an eye. Then you just... Then you just know, then you're going to be like, I'm going to watch lots of movies. No, that's all you do. And then you like, but don't have a real strong passion to opinion about any of them. No, if you're just like, I like movies. Movies are good. And you just don't, you just don't get upset about shit. But yeah, those are some of the cannibal films we recommend. And hey, let's see what cannibal films do in the future. And for all you Americans, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a wonderful holiday. Um, happy gobble gobble day. Gobble gobble gobble. We are doing something very special on the next episode of Friday Nightmares. It will not be horror related. It will be a one night stand wrestling event. Um, boy, I would not want to have a one night, or if I was going to have a one night stand with anybody, it would be Rob Humphrey and Tim Davis. Absolutely. They like you. So that's nice because neither yeah. one of them like me. Big old so, orgy. You're not going to be able to tell one from the other. We're going to be <laughs> knees and elbows everywhere. That's going to be like a WWE match. It's going to be like a fatal four way. Only I'm just going to be sitting on in the side of the video camera masturbating. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we're going to be having a wrestling podcast. We're very excited for it. So it is, we call it One Night Stand because obviously we're Friday Nightmares. We're not a wrestling podcast. But we, uh, it's very challenging. Tim Dan, Tim, Tim Daniels, Tim Davison as a Tim podcast. That, yeah, why did I call him Davison? <laughs> Make up your fucking name now. Uh, they have a, re- a podcast called Wrestling for Dummies. And it's just very challenging to schedule with them, even though I had absolutely no problem setting up this event for us. But apparently it's too hard for Tim to have me on. But anyway, that he's, said, he's intimidated, Heather. That's why. I Honestly, like, I can't wait to bring that up on the recording when I'm like, oh, Tim, this really took me all of five seconds to set up this recording for us um and we are going to be going over our views on wwe aew uh mount rushmore of professional wrestling and finally but not last least uh where we see what we want to see in the future for wrestling so i will be moderating it which i think these guys think it's just going to be like a screen test it's i'm not that i'm not that passionate like i'm passionate but i don't i find wrestling fans most of the time annoying so if people get too like loud i'm like um shit yeah i was gonna say we're passionate like we are with our horror films where it's like like we're not gonna argue and like if you like something we're not gonna try to change your mind yeah we don't care (laughs) we're like good for you (laughs) glad you like it but we will be doing that so it should be fun discussion i'm really looking forward to uh hanging out with tim and rob again i plan on drinking a lot during that podcast so that should be a lot of fun yeah i'm Uh, I'm gonna uh, Need some booze just to oh, yeah, you are. have fun with it as well. And also get myself hyped up for the AEW full gear the next day. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the next day will be full gear. So Tim will be all like, ah, I'm AEW. And then he'll be like, I like AEW. It'll be great. Um, <laughs> but please listen to that. And as always, we thank you for listening to us. Uh, we hope we give you some 2022s to watch and a good little discussion about cannibalism. And I don't know, maybe that's what you're into. You can always let us know. I don't know, you know. Yeah, Netflix would you want to eat me? <laughs> Scott Scott really wants to know that, actually. He's really hoping you say yes. <laughs> and just just because I know, you know, hair is just a pain in the ass when you're trying to eat somebody, I'll shave for you. Yeah, see, even Scott's a gentleman. See, I'll that's the sure. kind of gentleman he is. Wait, it'll be a gentleman's agreement. A gentleman's agreement. I love it, Scotty. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So anyway, we are members of the Legion Podcast Network, and we're not going to eat any of them because maybe Bo Ram, Bo Ram's though. Bo and Court <laughs> coming Bo for you, boys. Out. Darren, oh no, let's go for oh, Darren. Yeah, Darren too. Yeah, absorb some of his smartness so we can be just as smart as Darren. So we are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network. You can find us on the Kill the Cast feed. Uh, the Legion Podcast Network also has a Patreon. For $3 a month, you can listen to some awesome additional content, movie reviews, commentaries, get away free promo codes. And if you're not a member of Legion Patreon yet, Scotty and I want to know one thing. What are you waiting for? <laughs> What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for?
Excellent. Excellent, Scotty. So please join us uh, because we, what is it? What is the saying? We are all one or something like that. We are legion. We are legion. So please join us and please listen to our, our one night stand wrestling podcast. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Tim and Rob are awesome. That's why we make fun of them so much. Uh, they're a really cool dude. So I'm looking forward to having them on that podcast and we'll be back next time with more 2022s and more good old podcast fun. But do you have anything to say to the people before we sign off, Scotty? Until next time, everybody. Um, for all my American friends, happy Thanksgiving. Um, and enjoy and get stuffed because you know me, I love getting stuffed. <laughs> Until next time, unpleasant dreams. See ya. <laughs>